Happy Thursday. Welcome karibu sana to our today's episode of My Opinion. I really thank you for joining us today. And it's a great pleasure to be having you around in this channel, Timothy Ndua. We thank you very much for finding time to join us so that we may learn one or two things concerning the kind of lives we are living today. As we always say, in my opinion, we bring together our different minds and we have a foundation of the scriptures and that is where we base our arguments on. Today, we have a great show ahead and uh, before everything, just click the subscribe button and uh, follow us so that you may be getting uh, videos and new videos every time that we upload one. My name is Timothy Ndua and Karibu Sana to our today's episode of My Opinion. Today we are talking about intercultural relationships or intercultural marriages. Now, we want to ask ourselves, how easy it is it for a Kikuyu to marry a Kamba, for a Luo to marry a Luya, for a Kisi person to marry a Kikuyu person? How or what are some of the challenges that such a relationship faces? Is it a good and an easy route to follow? How free are you to date a person from a different, a different tribe from the one you come from? How easy is it for you? Do you have some issues that you have in mind that keep telling you that a certain tribe seems to make better wives or better husbands than the other one? How do you feel and what in your opinion, do you feel is, um, can be the result of these intercultural relationships or intercultural marriages? And so, Karibu, you listen to my opinion, and I will also want to get your opinion on this topic. We first ask ourselves, what are some of the advantages of an intercultural relationship? When a gentleman who is from the Eastern gets a lady from the Western, or when a guy from the Central gets a lady from the Nyanza region. Now, what are some of the advantages of such a relationship or such a marriage? Remember, we are also talking of an African getting married to uh, a Westerner. We are also talking about a white getting married to a black person, interracial uh, marriages and relationships. What are some of the pros and cons of such relationships? And I want to share with you, uh, sometimes it could be my opinion, but uh, you can as well share yours. But one, whenever two people uh, coming from two different ethnic backgrounds come together and form a relationship, there's a likelihood that the offsprings may have some uh, good uh, uh, genes and some enhanced, you know, that blending of genes may make the children more strong and more, you know, more, 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 more dependent, more, more, more immune to some of the weaknesses that may be in individual tribes' genes. So I feel that that is a great advantage, you know, for those uh, children who are uh, born uh, from uh, a cross marriage. That breed is usually very strong. The children are very strong. They are very immune. They, are, they have a strong character. And I feel that that is a great advantage that we see and we fight from intermarriages. Now, number two, there's an issue of tolerance. You know, when... I, a Kikuyu, gets married to a Luo or a Kalejin or any other tribe, that shows a great level of tolerance. And of course, that will mean that my family will tolerate your family and uh, that even that culture, the traditions and uh, your way of life. 
that means there will be a great uh, tolerance in such a relationship. You know, I come from people who, be, uh, who have different beliefs, who uh, do things differently, who eat different kinds of food, and now I'm relating to a person who comes from another extreme. They enjoy different types of foods. They speak different languages. And you know, all those things, it calls for great tolerance. And I feel that is a strength. That is a great advantage of somebody getting married to a person of a different ethnic identity. Number three, you're able to learn about other cultures. Of course, you get a good opportunity to learn what other people do, the kind of their cultural activities. You're able to understand so many things about other people's uh, cultures. You become a person of diversity. You're able to understand what other people, apart from your, uh, your ethnicity, uh, what do other people do or how do they face issues, how do they handle different circumstances, you are well and better placed. And finally, there's the issue of language. Of course, you find yourself learning their language. Kama wewe ni mkyuk, na hapa kuna mkamba, you are able to learn kamba. So you get, uh, you, 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 you get the, the wealth of language. You are able to speak more than two or three languages. And uh, that again becomes a great advantage of uh, having a relationship, an intercultural relationship. Of course, we can as well talk about food. You can imagine, uh, watu wanyanza wanapenda this kind of foods, samaki, ugali, and the like. And uh, people from central, sometimes we take githeri most of the time. And now, oh, that union, you find yourself, even your menu, there's some wealth coming from it. And oh, these are basic and uh, simple things that we can find as advantages of an intercultural relationship. I don't know whether by now you feel you are good to go and uh, engage that person who you feel comes from a different ethnicity. Well, it is to your discretion. You are at liberty to do it, but ensure that you are well guided. Let me first talk about the disadvantages of falling into such a relationship. Now, number one, of course, which is a big challenge, is the language barrier. Now, this is a person who speaks differently, a different tongue from the one you know. When they are speaking their language, you do not understand, especially the first years, when it is very strange. You feel as if it's people who are speaking in tongues. When the daughter is conversing with the mother and they are laughing and you are there, you do not understand anything. You feel like, could it be that they are discussing me? Could it be that they are talking about my weaknesses? Now, that becomes the first challenge, language itself. When they speak, when she makes a call or when he makes that call and they laugh and they discuss issues, you are just floating. You do not understand anything. You feel like they are talking about things that are, are against what you may wish to hear. Now, you get discouraged. You feel, you get moody. You feel like, you know, it's a barrier. It's a, you can't fathom or comprehend what they are talking about. Language becomes a great barrier. And it's good to remind you. Well, we share Kiswahili English as a common language, and so you may feel a bit comfortable. But remember, you will need to take this lady home. And you'll need to introduce her to your mother who understands only the local language, doesn't maybe even understand English or Swahili. Sometimes they only are were able to converse with uh, the mother tongue. Now, this young, great, handsome man, but he can't talk to the mother-in-law or to the brothers, uh, in law, the sisters in law, the father in law, that becomes a big challenge. So at first, when we are in town, 
it may not appear a big challenge. But when we go and when we get home, it may be something that needs to be considered. Now, the second thing, of course, it's the cultural identity of your children. Now, when your children are born or come to being, and uh, they cannot identify themselves to a particular a cultural a particular identity. Now that becomes a problem because um, you realize that every child wants to say that I belong to a particular ethnicity, I belong to a particular tribe, I belong to a particular race. And so if your children doesn't have any identity, it, be, it gives them some challenge. And so you ought to consider this that you'll have children, at least you can say you're a kuk, you, so the other person can say I'm a mijikeda, I'm a digo, but your children will be lost therein. You also need to consider your children and you ought to be ready when you think about getting into that intercultural relationship. Now the other issue, of course, is the culture shock. Now this is where you realize uh, you, 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 you subscribe to different traditional beliefs and different cultural activities. Now, a husband, you come from a place where they subscribe to certain cultural beliefs and cultural practices, which is very different from maybe where the wife or the lady comes from. Of course, that becomes a challenge. When you visit the uh, in-laws in the up country and you're supposed to sit down in a particular way you're supposed to you know either maybe bend when um, you are talking to the uh, to the aged you're supposed to bow and maybe you are not used to that maybe you are supposed to shave your ha hair in a certain way maybe you are supposed to do things in a certain way how do they handle birthdays how do they handle marriages and weddings how do they handle bereavement and death and uh, that period of mourning? How do they handle the dowry, negotiations, and the ceremony? How do they handle different uh, seasons and different uh, uh, ceremonies in that particular culture? It is very important you understand what they do even before you get to eat uh, because there's no need you get to eat and then you feel that the culture shock is too hard and you're not able to proceed. Then, of course, we have the danger of acceptance. How will the family accept this? It is your decision who you get married to. But when you get married, you have a society to take your wife or your husband to. You have a family to take your wife to. You have your mother, your father, your brothers and your sisters. You have the society around, the neighborhood. How receptive will they be to the decision that you are making? Some people, we come from families, and it's good to say these things. Uh, some people, we come from families where we have heard our parents talk again and again and say how uncomfortable they are to intermarry with a specific uh, ethnicities. Well, I don't want to be tribal here, but these are our parents, and maybe their reasons could be valid or invalid, but you cannot ignore those uh, sentiments. You cannot ignore their desires. You cannot ignore all that. So however much I may feel attracted to this sister and this brother, however much I may feel attracted to this Mzungu or this Muhindi, or this um, um, China, however much I may feel attracted to them, then I may also need to reconsider and think, how m will my family respond to such a union? We cannot hide under the, sun, uh, under the sand. We have enough families that have broken because of such interference, the interference from the social uh, the, 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 the society, interference from the parents and from the neighborhood, we cannot ignore that. And finally, 
we need to understand about the, rang uh, the language barrier. Now, however much we say that the language is uh, on the positive side, we'll be able to learn more and different languages, we also ought to understand that language ought to unite us and rather not to are not supposed to uh, divide or to separate us. So these are some of the things that we must ensure we understand, even before we get to it. In my opinion, I feel that, you know, God has allowed us that, uh, and he takes all of us equal before God. There is no black, there's no white, or there's no uh, brown. Before God, we are all equal. We are at liberty to select our spouses from the different ethnicities. And actually, Paul says uh, in some scriptures that all things are allowed, but not all things are beneficial. Yes, you could be allowed to pick a spouse from any ethnic background. You, yes, you are allowed. But as Paul said, I also feel, in my opinion, that though you are allowed, but you need to reconsider and you think and you think. You know, sometimes I try to imagine if a Kikuyu, and I'm giving this an ex as an example, if a Kikuyu from Muranga feel a bit difficult to get a lady from Kiambu, or a lady in Kiambu feels uncomfortable marrying a man from Nyeri, or a man from Nyeri feels uncomfortable to marry a Muembu. Now, if, and this is the same region, and fee, people feel uncomfortable getting married to a person of, you know, a distant, and still from the same tribe, then, if that is the case, then considering getting outside that tribe, outside that race, outside that ethnicity, then you need to be more and more and more careful. That is my opinion. I'm sure that you could be having a totally different opinion concerning this matter. Well, feel free to share with me and to share with us. We always appreciate the feedback that we get. But as at now, I feel that get a good lady from wherever they come from. But before you make that commitment, consider and reconsider, it will save you a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, stress and pain in future. Thank you so much for joining me in today's op uh, episode of My Opinion. It has been pleasure hosting you. My name is Timothy Ndua, and until next Thursday when we meet, same channel, God bless you, even as you rethink about intercultural relationships. God bless you.